I want to show you how a plasterer can easily earn a thousand pounds in a day. Now, I want you to make me a promise though. I need you to watch this video all the way through because I'm going to carefully explain to you exactly how to do that. But also, I think that the amount that I walk away with at the end of the job will blow your mind. So make sure you watch to the very end. So, you've caught us on the second half of the day. We've already had a mix this morning and we have plastered two of our tech scenes, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute, in that room and the back bedroom. And now, I'm going to skin this one and the landing one. We've got a bit of a lethal contraption set up to reach over the landing stairs. Um, I thought it'd be nice to do a little video and introduce you to the new apprentice. So without further ado, I'll, uh, I'll let you see him in just a moment. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about this job. I'll explain to you why we're here and what we're doing. So the customer phoned me the other day. We've sort of squeezed this in because we're doing a lot of rendering jobs. But the rain is making it almost impossible to plan things. So I just need to pull a little job in like this now, uh, just to keep it with a cash flow, because we've got a lot of money tied up in, uh, in different jobs at the minute. That's just the way it goes. Now, the customer phoned me up, he's just bought this place, and he wants these sealants skimming, all our tech sealants upstairs. And the reason these are going is because he's having them checked for asbestos, and they contain asbestos, and he can't live with it, they need to be sealed in. The fellow from the asbestos testing said to him, whatever you do, do, do not scrape them, don't rip them down. This is the man from the asbestos thing, he said, the only thing you can do is skim over them, or board over them, skim over them. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tip, a little bit of advice. This is a 1920s house. Now, Pay attention to this bit, it's quite important. <laughs> this is a 1920s house. So these ceilings originally wouldn't have been plasterboard, they would have been lath and plaster, okay? Now this is important because when they were doing lath and plaster ceilings, they were using lime plaster. When you use lime plaster, there's a high chance that there'll be lime wash paint on the ceiling, okay? That's important, lime wash paint is like, it's distemper, it's chalky, it's dusty. Someone comes along and our text is over it, and a new plaster of the Artex, and the, the plaster sticks to the Artex, but the Artex pulls away because it's only stuck to dust, basically the ceiling falls down, right? So why am I skimming straight over Artex? The reason is, I know at some point these ceilings have been boarded, and I'll tell you, this is what I was getting to, I'll tell you how I know. Whenever you go into an old building, and you look at the ceilings, if you've got cracks that just run any way, diagonal, zigzag, whatever, they're just all over the place, then you know for the fact that that's a lath and plaster ceiling. Plasterboard will only ever crack in straight lines down the joints. Now, I've left this bit off purposely. This went right down the whole ceiling. See here, there's a straight crack that ran right down. There was no other cracks in the ceiling. In the back bedroom, there was a straight crack that ran right along. So I knew when I was pricing the job, I knew looking at the ceilings, these have definitely been overboarded at some time. That's how you can tell. And another thing to confirm it, when we drop the light fittings down, you can see just inside, and you can see plasterboard just inside there. So because it's plasterboard, there's no line wash paint. It's just Artex straight over the board, asbestos in the Artex, so we just skim over it, job done. I know for a fact this won't fall off the plasterboard. Now it's vital that you understand about the lime wash paint because this is how you can earn more money if you understand how lime wash paint affects plaster. The minute the customer messaged me and sent me pictures of the job, he reached out to me and said, can you give me a price for these ceilings, Kirk? Yeah, fine, no problem. The minute I seen straight cracks on his ceilings, I knew instinctively straight away those ceilings have been plasterboarded. I knew if they'd been boarded, we wouldn't have lime wash paint on top of the plasterboards, so I knew there was no chance of the Artex falling down. So I asked the customer, I said, have you already had prices? Yes, I've had two guys can't give me quotes. What the guys had quoted him for, because they'd seen the Artex, they had panicked, and they'd thought to themselves, we need to overboard it. 
they've seen the age of the house, they've seen the Artex. So in their mind, straight away, the best thing to do is overboard it. But they didn't realise it's already been boarded because they missed that one vital fact with straight cracks, which is a giveaway. Now, what they'd done is they'd worked out the cost of all the materials and doing the job. The material cost with about 20 plasterboards and the screws and all the rest of the plaster and everything else they need is about £300. Now, the quote that he had had, the fellas had said to him, it's going to take him about three days to do it. Two plasterers or two men to hold the plasterboards in place. So he was getting prices around the twelve to £1,600 mark. So straight away, I thought to myself, I could do all those, not a problem, I can skim straight over them. So I just said to the man, would you be happy with a thousand pounds and I could do it this weekend for you? He was over the moon, he snatched my hand off. Now, don't go, because there's more, there's a little twist to this story at the end, and I don't want you to miss it. Let's carry on. Well, it's that, that one first, Cozy. Now, I know it looks a little bit roadly, because it's Artex, I'm going to flatten that with the speed skin in just a minute and let it pick right up. I'm going to get this little landing one out now. Now, look here. What do you think of my little contraption here? Does that look safe? You know, come on, this you see. Now, I've usually got a ladder in the van. I've usually got a nice long ladder that I put from there to there and a chest across there and a plank across. The ladder's gone busy. Who knows where that is? So, until we get another one, I'll put these steps from here to here. Now I know it doesn't look great, but realistically, the plank's there to stop the ladders sliding through. The ladders are there, they're on that ledge and on that wall, so I mean they really shouldn't be able to go anywhere. That's the little challenge of this. I'll tell you the bigger challenge. These stipples, some of them are quite heavy, but the customer basically made me promise that I wouldn't scrape the ceilings because he's paranoid about it. I think he's got his little kids coming in here with him and he's he's really keen on this asbestos being an issue. So I promised him I wouldn't scrape them at all. So we're just having to lay the plaster on quite thick to get over it, which ultimately just takes more stuff and takes longer, but we'll get there. Now this morning, we had that ceiling in there and that one in there, but the edges still need cleaning down yet. We haven't, we haven't quite finished them. But we, I'm conscious of time, so we're getting on with this. We've got to just get this going on. Otherwise, we'll be here till 10 o'clock tonight if we don't get moving. Oh. Right, so I'm going to give these ceilings a little flattening with this. I'll give you a little tip for anyone who's got one of these. Excuse mine, this is getting a bit old, so it's a bit canky. Well, see these, see this clip? This basically will end up doing nothing because the plastic just flexes out. So one little thing you can do to, to keep this grab tight on is put a screw through there. You see that? Drywall screw straight through there, tightens that up, and it doesn't half clamp that down tight then. And then you can always, if you want to slide this out, you can just take it out. It will still move even with that in it, you know, you can, you can still move it around, but it's a lot tighter. If that wasn't in there, that'd just be sliding up and down. Now, this is just the first coat. First coat of plaster, flatten these in, let them pick up a little bit. I am conscious that that's going off as well, though, so this is the first bag. With the second bag in there, it's a bit wetter, so I can get this one flat and put some wet stuff on it. Now I always use the speed skim for flattening the first coat when skimming over Artex ceilings. I've basically skimmed over thousands and thousands of Artex ceilings and got a little technique down to a T now. And this, I've found, is just the best way to get a mint job. got two size speed skins. I've actually got a little baby one in the back of the van. never I've got a little baby one in the back of the van that I could change out for this one but I'll just navigate around all these little bits. The idea of this is when I do this it's not to get the ceilings looking mint. If these were plasterboard ceilings just bored they were dead flat they'd look lovely. 
But when I do say for our text, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get rid of all the high spots and then I let it pick right up. And then when I second coat it, I've got no high spots coming through the first, through the second coat. Does that make sense? And that way then, the second coat goes on absolutely lovely because the first coat's nice and firm and filled out flattish with nothing sticking through. It, uh, it just makes a world of difference when you come to second coating. And it's nice and easy because this thing's on a pole. So I can reach out of a bit like this, no problem. Okay. We'll get the second coat on this now. This stuff is starting to go off a little bit as well. But fortunately this has gone off a lot more, so. It's a little bit soon, really. It's a little bit soon for me to be getting this on. I might get a little bit of belief that I can handle it. But I've got to get on it because that stuff on the board setting, it works out like that sometimes. It's lovely if it takes exactly two bags to put the ceilings on, exactly, because then you can flatten it and sit down for half an hour. But if it's one and a half and you've got half a bag on the spot, then. So the lad that's with me now, he's actually on the camera. I'll reveal him very, very soon, you'll see who he is. Um, He's just getting used to mixing the stuff, so it's easy for the time being for me to just say knock another bucket up rather than asking to knock half a bucket up and stuff because mixing half a bucket is actually more difficult than a full bucket. You get used to mixing full bags, you know where your water level is, you know how to do it. So for the time being, you know, we'll just, uh, I'll struggle with him. Just getting the last little bit to this landing scene and second coated now. As soon as you get this laid down as the turn goes that's how my dad used to say it you lay it on which is your first coat and you lay it down which is the second coat but anyway i don't really say that very much i usually just say first coat second coat because it's quite simple then but as soon as we get this laid down uh, we'll have 10 minutes then and we'll start cleaning around the edges of these two ceilings because uh, they haven't even started really going off properly yet i'm going to show the new guy how to do it and he's going to carry on with that whilst I carry on smoothing these out. Come on. Now, this is something that a lot of you guys have seen me use. People always say to me, why haven't, why haven't you got a spot board? Why aren't you using a spot board? Well, the truth of the matter is most jobs are quite small. Most jobs, there's not much room for one. But there's a bit of space here and it's good as well for our mystery guest to learn to tip buckets. You wouldn't think it's that difficult, but there's, a little there's another job. There's a technique to it. Oh, by the way, talking about the jobs coming in, if you want to show you how to get your phone pinging non-stop with work, constantly coming in, then hit the little link in the description. I've got a little sales and marketing group to show you how to market yourself as a tradesman, how to generate lots of work. Uh, right, apart from that, there's a little technique, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely, yes. definitely. It's not as simple as just picking the bucket up and sitting it out. But anyway, let's get this finished off and uh, we'll start cleaning down the other ceilings. I'll show you in a minute all the, all the work that we've done. Right, Nathan is busy cleaning up. So I'm just flattening this one in now. This is the, um, the bedroom ceiling. This has just been flattened in now over the Artex. This is the first time I've touched it. It's had two coats and this is this is the flatten now, so just giving this the old trusty carbon steel. I've got to do this one, quickly get out on the landing, flatten that one in, and then leave them then to, to really pick up. And then we can apply a little bit of water. So that's it, let's get out here now onto this one that's here. It makes it a bit of a challenge because the ceilings are a little bit up and down to start with. They've just boarded over what was there originally. Now originally, they've left the old ceilings up. I can see that, because round the loft hatch here, let me show you, I can see there's the new board and underneath there's the old lath and plaster. So if them ceilings were up and down, they've only put a 9.5 mil board over the top of it. So that will have just followed it. So the ceiling's a bit up and down, and the walls are a little bit in and out. 
meaning that the angles are a little bit of a challenge but once we get these um, cut out at the end it will look beautiful and it will all look um, perfect so let's see if that just stays there there we go trying to just make sure I fill in any hollows as I go so sometimes you get a little section you see that the trowel doesn't doesn't quite touch everywhere and it leaves a little hollow section and you fill it in so you take some plaster like that bump, and fill the hole in with it now that's the difference when you use a flexi trowel your flexi trowel will just go in you know look for instance there's one here let me see if I can show you this I'm just spin the camera around there's a little hollow there, it doesn't show it very well, but there's a little hollow just there, see, see around it there and if I had a flexi trowel it would just go into that and it'd all look nice and smooth, but I know I've got to build the plaster in there and now it's gone you see and we've got a little bit of Artex shown through there, we'll just put a little bit extra on that now I don't worry so much about all this this will all wipe off at the end, we're going to go around and clean all these edges up because they are really, really ropey. But that's just because of the condition of the walls and ceilings I'm going over. Right, this ceiling has now had its first wet trowel. This ceiling has now had its first wet trowel. Nathan has been in and cleaned up around the edges in here so this one looks nice now this is finished now we're just going to give a bit of a brush up on the floor and um, he's just in this one in here let's see yeah, you behind the door I'm in it. Right. Yeah, I'm okay. say hello nathan how are we this is nathan this is nathan's what's this day five day six now day six day six he's doing well anyway that's Nathan. I know you've all been waiting to meet him. <laughs> right, he's doing quite well. He's on day six. He's mixing, he's cleaning. He understands where everything goes in the van. It's all the things that, that you sort of take for granted that you have to reteach someone. And he's picking it up quite quick. Like knowing the system when we turn up to a job. Just knowing what needs to come out of the van straight away, what needs to happen first without me telling him, and he's getting that quite quick now. So he knows that when we turn to a job, he needs to get his sheet out for mixing on, he needs to get the SBR out, that needs to come first, the lights need dropping, you know, the buckets need to be filled with water straight away at his little mixing station where he's gonna be, the whisk needs to be out. So it's all those sort of things that just take a little while to, to sort of get right. But once they're in, once he's got them programmed in, that's it the way now. So he's just getting to that point now. So uh, not trying to overload the lad with too much stuff. So ultimately, he will be doing a bit of filming. That's why there's a bit of a shortage of videos, because whilst he gets all that under wraps, whilst he gets his head around all that, I don't want to be adding in the extra hassle of having to get the camera out and start filming me. So, But he's getting there now. So. Right, this is... The final little stretch now. You guys can't see, but I'm stepping over the banister onto my little contraption again. You know, just casually risking my life as you do. Well, probably wouldn't die if I fell from here, but it would hurt. <laughs> it would hurt a bit. Anyway, this is it now. I'm just going to give this the second wet trowel. Ultimately, all around the edges, still need cleaning down. Um, you can do it now. But what tends to happen is, because the plaster is still a little bit soft, you end up smearing and smudging, uh, gouging your ceiling. I always find it much better to clean the edges out at the end, um, sort of just when you've polished, just before you polish or just after you polish. Um, you just go around and cut them out. I'll, in fact, I'll show you. I'll show you. Once I've gone over this and we're at that stage, I'll show you how I do it. Still need charging a little bit. Okay, mate. <laughs> Take a good while to charge them batteries, don't we? For the whisk. 
How many bars is in the one foot that's in the whisk now, mate? How much, have we, how much juice have we got in that one? Pardon? How much juice have we got in the one that's in the whisk? Still three. Oh, still three bars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was going to say, if that was on one or something then, I'd take that out tonight and charge them in the workshop, you know, to make sure they're ready for tomorrow. No, that one's fine. Okay, mate. The lad's thinking. He's thinking ahead. Good sign. Using initiative. Okay, we're just giving this one a little polish now. This is finished as I'm going. I just slice along the angles and cut those out. And then that makes it easier when Nathan comes along. And he can just wipe these and he'll give it his cloth. And they'll be finished beautifully. But to make us faster, we're we'll like, Nate, carry on with that. Whilst I just concentrate on polishing. Now, we've had to sit around and wait for a little bit for this to pour in because it was staying quite wet. And the thing is, when you're skimming over plasterboard, so for the sight lads, they can get a polish on their work quite soon. Whereas when you go over Artex, you've got all sorts of different backgrounds that you're going over. What you'll find is that you'll get little bubbles and little reactions like here and they won't go until the stuff has got to a certain level where it's setting. So we end up not being able to just polish where we want and having to wait for the stuff. And there's a good indicator when it's ready to polish when it starts turning dark. So I've got two little dark patches. As soon as I start getting dark patches in the plaster, I know then it's not, you know, I can get a polish on it. I'm just polishing now, and where is he? Nate's over there, he's just going around cleaning all the angles down, and that's this ceiling. This is basically polished, finished. We've got the one on the landing to do, and then the only thing left then is to collect the wages. That's the best part of the job. Now, I promised you at the start of this video that I would tell you at the end exactly how much I walked away with from this job. So the customer come in, he was absolutely made up with the work. He looked around, he was so pleased with everything. And we got to chatting a little bit. And he explained to me that he's actually downsized. He, uh, he had a bit of a nicer house and he's had to move here and downsize a little bit because he needs to get rid of his mortgage. You see, unfortunately, it turns out that the customer was not very well. Um, and he's got young kids. And he's not going to get any better, unfortunately. Um... So the plan for him is to get the house just right because he might not be around for too much longer. So he's in a sad situation. He's just trying to get everything in order to look after his family for when he goes his separate way, can we say. So that hit me like a lead brick. I went home and wrote out the customer's invoice and told him quite specifically that he owes me no money whatsoever. I don't want a penny off him. And I would feel offended if he did send me money. I would much rather him put that money towards a little getaway for him and the family, maybe spend a weekend away somewhere with his kids. You see, I'm in quite a fortunate situation with having this YouTube channel and you, all you guys watching me, just off you guys watching me alone, YouTube sends me a little check in the mail once a month on a massive amount but it's enough for me to be able to look after my family and be able to do little good deeds like this every now and then you know I couldn't afford to do it every day put it that way but, <laughs> but when when you see an opportunity to be able to help someone out it's um it's much more of a pleasure for me you know made me feel good being able to do that for him so there you have it how much did I make zero but that said potentially this video will pay out and um, I'll make money from this video instead sometimes you don't realize how lucky you are you know it's not all about chasing the money you gotta remember what's important sometimes your health and your family come before anything and if they don't then they should see you on the next one